Hello. In exercise 6, we are asked to determine the equation of motion for a disc rolling down an inclined plane. So, we're going to use the Lagrangian and the Euler-Lagrange equations to solve the equation of motion in a similar fashion to what we did with the pendulum. So, first of all, we need to establish the Lagrangian. As we already know, the Lagrangian L is equal to your kinetic energy, which is a function of x dot minus your potential energy, which is a function of x. So we need to be careful when we're looking at a disc rolling down an inclined plane. It is going to have two types of kinetic energy. It's going to have rotational kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the rolling motion, and the translational kinetic energy, which is simply the kinetic energy as it moves a distance x down the inclined plane. So, the translational kinetic energy is very simple. So, translational kinetic energy, I'm just going to put T with a subscript, little t, like that. And that's just going to be a half mx dot squared. Yeah, we already know that. That's translational kinetic energy. What about the rotational kinetic energy? Let's put T subscript R. This is going to equal a half I. I is inertia. I'm going to multiply that by omega squared. Okay? Omega is the angular velocity. We can also write this as a half i theta dot squared in derivative notation. But what's i? That's the moment of inertia. So i is equal to a half m r squared. m is the mass, r is the radius. Okay? So our total kinetic energy, I could put T total, is going to be our half mx dot squared. And I'm going to add a half i, i is a half mr squared, a half mr squared. And then we're going to multiply that by theta dot squared, which is our omega squared, or angular velocity. All right? And then, now we need to find our potential energy. So, like we did in the pendulum, we use trigonometry. So we're gonna do the same thing here. It's moved the distance x, okay? So it's like we took a picture in time. It's moving down, we took a picture, and it's at this point. Let's move the distance x. And this angle is going to be alpha, okay? L is simply the height uh, from where it rolled and to the bottom, which is the zero point of potential energy, okay? So what you want to find for our potential energy is this height here, okay? So... Let's quickly say that our normal potential energy that we think of, our gravitational potential energy U, is equal to mgl, okay? L is the height. But we want to find that height because that's the height that the disk has rolled from. So, if we use our sine, we know that sine is equal to opposite divided by our hypotenuse. So our opposite is this. This is what we want to find out. And our hypotenuse is simply x, the distance that it has rolled. So what we can say for this distance here is that the potential energy u is mgl, and then we're going to minus mgx sine 
alpha, okay? X sine alpha is that distance here, okay? Excellent. So, let me just make this clear. MgL minus MgX sine alpha, what does that mean? That is simply the height of the disk, okay, at this point. Therefore, that's the potential energy if you multiply it by mg. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So we've got the potential energy and we've got our total kinetic energy. 